This is Golf with Jay Delsing. A two-time college All-American at UCLA. A participant in nearly 700 PGA Tour events. Seven professional wins to his credit. Over 30 years of professional golf experience. A member of the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. Hey, good morning. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay. Sitting down with my buddy, Pearly, John Perlis, caddy of over 100 PGA Tour events with me, author, former business owner. What are you currently doing? Currently a business owner and formerly a business owner. I'm, I'm always going to be a business owner. So we formatted the show like a round of golf. Uh, the first segment is the on the range segment. It's brought to you by the gateway section of the PGA. Just delighted to have these guys back involved with the show. And we thank the over 300 men and women across the area that are tirelessly working to enhance our golf experience, make the courses, run the events, do what they do. It's just fantastic. We're also giving away a dozen TP5 golf balls. Send me an email, j at jdelsongolf.com, and you'll be entered. Put balls in the subject somewhere along the line. We've got Jeff Thornhill. Thorny, thank you for the, the golf ball feature. It's terrific. I'm getting emails every day and questions. It's, it's just terrific. Pearl, we're skipping our social media because we don't care. We're canceling you. But we are not canceling Bob and Kathy Donahue at Donahue Painting and Refinishing. 314 314- 805-2132. Guys, call these folks. Besides, uh, you'll be better off knowing them. They're great people. They will come to your home. They're professionals, and they will beautify it. 314-805-2132. All right, Pearl, so we got a show today. This one, I'm really excited about our Gateway Spotlight feature. This week, it's on Nathan Carnes. Nathan is up for secretary of the, of the PGA of America, national secretary. So, Pearl, what that means is if Nathan wins this nomination, and I really think he will, he's going to, in three years or so, be the president of the PGA of America. That's how that well, rotation works. Isn't that cool? That's awesome. That's a big responsibility because they got a lot of work to do, that group. I will tell you what, he is the man for the job, and, uh, yeah, I'm excited to get to talk to him. Good for him. I think the PGA has been making strides recently, and it's, it'd be great to keep it going. Man, we had a lot of golf on this weekend, Pearl. The Women's U.S. Open. Okay, they played down at Pine Needles. Man, and the golf course on Sunday was just a beast. They had some really treacherous hole locations. There were some three putting going on. There was there was a little bit of there was a little bit of everything going on. But one thing that stood out in my mind, John, is there was only one score under par. Yeah, that that's pretty pretty unique to say the least. And Minji Lee certainly took it to the rest of the field. Uh, she was pretty spectacular. By the way, do you know where she's from? So the easy answer would be to say uh, South Korea. So I'm not going to say that. I'm going to say she's from Southern California. She's an Australian, but that was close. Actually, that wasn't very really close, but there was no. That reason. wasn't even close. But how'd you like my reasoning? I've always liked your reasoning. That's why we get along so well, and we also end up in very bad spots because we get along with our reasoning. But uh, yeah, that's a that's a good exactly. point. That's a good point. I did not know she's from Australia. Yeah, well, obviously you didn't. So hey, a couple other things here. So she wins by four shots. And where does our good our good favorite that we like to track all the time, Nellie Corder, coming off of her uh, surgery for her blood clots, still manages a tie for eighth at two under. But but that's eleven back of Minji Lee. That's some serious playing. She wins by four, and uh, really after that, there's a thirteen under, nine under, seven under, six under. So she won by a lot. She uh, outclassed the field, no question about that. But uh, t- let's talk a little bit about Nellie. I mean, she made it back. And the the first competition she gets to face is a U.S. Open style. I mean, that is pretty intense. If you looked at some of her rounds, I mean, she she's just a superstar. She is a superstar. She is a great face for that tour. Uh, she's a great face for American golf. And, you know, she had a lot of really positive things to go in her way. And, and you could tell she was a little bit rusty, though, as well. Well, I wanted, I wanted to throw something out there, too, that was – Fairly unique for them. Do you know what Minji Lee walked away with, what her, what her win was worth on the ladies' tour? What's the exact number? 1.8, I believe it was, Jay. And what a change that is through the years. You know, there's so much going on in society with trying to make everything equal and that kind of stuff. And, and 
I don't know where you stand on that, but I, I'm just of the old school that, hey, man, if they're drawing the crowds, if they're demanding the, the attention and they can make the money, then they're playing for more money. But I don't know how you just conjure money out of out of thin air. You know, some of the local, uh, I think some of the recent things has been that the, the men's soccer team for the U.S. soccer team and the ladies' soccer team make the same amount of money. And I'm sure everybody has different, uh, very emotional responses to that. But I'm kind of old school with capitalism. And if you if you're if you're generating the cash and there's enough to, of it to spread around, then do that. Otherwise, uh, don't do it. But I think that the ladies are st- continue to step it up, and they are generating more more uh, cash to be able to be playing for. But that's a heck of a purse. Well, you know, it's interesting, John, because I'm the father of four daughters and <clears throat> extremely pro female. And to your point, I think that first of all, I love to see that the fact that you won $1.8 million. I mean, that's fantastic. I don't know what the financial dynamics look like for the LPGA tour. I know that that the tour is trending in a great direction. John, don't know how those television contracts get negotiated. I'm much more familiar with the PGA tour and how we do it. I mean, I want the girls to be playing for as much as they possibly can. We, we, you have to have the financials. I guess my answer is you have to fi- have the financials work, meaning, you know, you're not going to sit there and pay the winner of the Women's U.S. Open $15 million when it's going to completely blow up the pay structure of that tour. Well, that's part of that's part of my point. And it, depending on what decrees come down from what courts and different, you know, lawsuits and stuff like that, that's when it gets a little goofy as far as I'm concerned. Or, or another entity that's generating more money needs to share it with the other so anyway that's a subject to another matter we don't don't normally get into that but the purse for this event jay for the for the ladies uh was 5.5 million yeah i mean it's it's substantial and it's it's great but again from we've we've watched the ladies tour for many many years and i i think it's at, at the pinnacle at this point from what we've ever seen and there's no reason to think it shouldn't keep on getting better and it's clearly a, a world tour as as i was just joking with you Minji Lee being from Australia, you obviously you've got the ladies from the States, you've got all the Asian countries. You have one of the most fun players to watch in all of golf, Brooke Henderson, out, out of Canada. So it's clearly a world tour that they've got going there. Yeah, no question. And uh, I love watching Brooks play. Man, she's she's all of about five foot tall, maybe five foot one. Man, does she take a rip at it? Uh, it's so much. It's so much fun to watch her, and she's just fearless out there, at least it appears to be. Between her and her sister, it's like two Barbie dolls walking down the uh, fairway. But uh, I don't think that that's the way they think internally. I think they are uh, extreme competitors. I was doing a little research on her yesterday. I know she had a really tough week on the greens. I think she finished ahead of only one person on, on strokes game putting this week. So she struggled on the greens. But she is the leader in professional golfers from Canada with the most number of wins and most money made and things like that. It's uh, I'm not sure about the money made because Mike Weir might make more be, because of the Masters win and things like that. But gosh, it's um, she's a really fun person to root for. Absolutely. Just tons of energy. And obviously she's starting to get into the commercials now and getting more and more notoriety, which from my vantage point, she deserves every, every penny of it. Let's uh, switch gears and go over to the Memorial event. Man, what a great event. It's always great to see Jack Nicklaus out there. Um, Billy Horschel kind of walks away with it. It was pretty uneventful Sunday, to be honest with you. you. You could see that Jack put a huge premium on hitting fairways this week. If you put the ball in the rough, you paid some high, high penalties. The only thing, I guess, the, probably the most exciting round and most exciting player to watch was Max Homa. We'll talk about Max a little bit. What did you see? What are you excited about? He, clearly an up-and-comer. Yeah, he's and, won twice uh, this year. He just most recently won down at um, TPC of Potomac. He won at Riviera. He won the Fortinet Championship. He also won there. I think he's got three wins. He's Two of those wins are this year. And I think he finished fifth, John, with a double bogey on 10 and a double bogey on 18. And shot 69, which is a lot of birdies over at Jack's place. Totally disagree that it was a little bit uneventful, but it was only uneventful the last couple of holes. Billy Horschel's putting on the backside saved his bacon. There was just putt after putt that if he's if he's missing those, let alone the whatever it was, 50 foot or whatever the heck he made for for eagle. Jack pointed it out at the end just how how clutch his putting was because he was a little bit all over the place, kind of what 12th, 13th, 14th hole type of a thing. 
And to make that those types of putts on a Sunday under that pressure, he made it uneventful because of that. There was about a four-hole stretch where it could have turned drastically and opened up to, to much of the field, or at least to Aaron Wise, who came in second. Uh, but it was fun to watch. It was, it was interesting to see the changes. What do you think about the changes, Jay? What, what was kind of the perception? And I don't know how much they changed the courses when you guys put, when you were playing. But, you know, you're used to a certain memorial, certain layout of the golf course and the way the golf course plays. Jack blows it up and makes it play kind of significantly different. Yeah, no, no question about it. You know what, Pearl, we're going to hold on to that question and take that on on the front nine. I got to do the tip of the cap segment. We got to wrap up the on the range segment. So the tip of the cap it's brought to you by our buddy, Colin Burnt, over at the Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood, 314-966-0303. Pearlie and I are both driving vehicles that Colin supplied for us. Love them both. But I'm tipping my cap today to the PGA Tour, and I'll tell you why. Really appreciate the way our commissioner, Jay Monahan, helped navigate us through some weird times. You know, we didn't lose a couple of tournaments, but not many. The game was back on television for spectators. We didn't have spectators right away, but I really thought the commissioner did a good job. Later in the show, we're going to talk about this LIV Saudi golf adjective you want to put on there. But I, my hat is tipped to, to Commissioner Monahan. I'm really excited to see how he's going to handle the situations, the Kevin Na resignation and things like that. So um, I'm tipping the cap to the PGA Tour, and I'm thanking Colin Burnt. At 314-966-0303 and the Dean Team Volkswagen of Kirkwood. Pearl, that's wrapping up the On the Range segment. We'll be right back with the front nine. On the Range with Jay Delsing is brought to you by TaylorMade. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. The front nine is coming up. Okay, folks, I think it's safe to say we're all ready to get back to some sort of normal life. And for me, that means I want to travel. AAA Travel is your one-stop shop for all of your travel needs. You feel like a cruise? Well, no problem. How about an all-inclusive trip to a beach somewhere in Mexico? AAA has got you covered. How about a trip to the Florida Keys, Las Vegas, or even Pebble Beach? All of that is just a click away. When I was a kid, my dad used AAA and their Triptych map service to get us to his home state of Wisconsin every year. We also used their wonderful roadside assistance in the middle of nowhere. Illinois when we had car trouble. But listen up, Triple A is so much more and has so much more to offer you and your family. They take care of everything. I mean everything for you and your vacation. When you're ready to travel, do it with confidence. Contact a Triple A advisor today and go to AAA.com backslash travel for all of your travel needs. Folks, do you need a new car, truck, or SUV? Then the Dean Team of Kirkwood is the place for you to go. 314-966-0303 and go see Colin Byrne. He just got me into a new SUV and I love it. Boy, did they make the experience painless and super, super easy. Most dealers don't have any cars in their lots, but at Dean Team of Kirkwood, Colin has an entire parking lot full of new and used cars. You don't want a VW? That's no problem. They have Audis, BMWs, Mercedes, anything you want. Colin and the Dean team of Kirkwood will go get it if they don't have it. Call them at 314-966-0303 or go to deanteamvwkirkwood.com. The Dean team for all your car buying needs. You're listening to Golf with Jay Delsing. For golf tips, news on the latest equipment, and everything golf. Log on to golfwithjdelsing.com. The front nine is coming up. I want to tell you about my friends and longtime supporters of this show, Marcone. Yes, they are incredible community stewards. Yes, they are the largest distributors of GE appliance parts in North America. What you don't know, they are spearheading, led by owner and St. Louis and Jim Sowers, a new service dog program with and in conjunction with David Faraday and the 24-7 Battle Buddy program. Jim and Mar Marcone are ensuring that a minimum of two service dogs a year will get partnered with a veteran hero in need. These dogs are expertly trained, connected with their veteran master, and then magic starts to happen. These dogs are retrained to meet the specific needs of their warrior, 
and to help them successfully navigate everyday life. You can learn more on Facebook at Troops First 24-7 Battle Buddies or reach out to me at j at jdelsingolf.com and I will fill you in on more of this program. It's time for the Gateway PGA Spotlight. To learn more, visit pga.com. Hey, good morning. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay, and this is the Gateway Spotlight. I'm sitting down this morning with my buddy, Nathan Carnes. And Nathan, the 2005 Assistant of the Year, the 2008 Horton Smith Award recipient of the year. 2012, you got the big one, Gateway Professional of the Year, the Herb Graffitz Award in 2015. But we have even a bigger fish to fry on this show today. Nathan, tell us about what's going on, and thanks for joining me. Oh, hey, thanks, Jay. I appreciate being on, and yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. To, I'm actually starting my 19th season at Winghaven Country Club, which is just a, a great club with a great group of members. Uh, we've got an exciting future with the new ownership groups just started this year, but I'd say most importantly, I've been been nominated to serve as an officer of the PGA of America, so I'm actually, I'm the second candidate in the 50-year history of the Gateway PGA to run for national office, so it's a 12-month process that started last November. I just came off the National Board of Directors. And now I'm campaigning for, well, it's, it's half over, so I've got six months to go. So there's three candidates for national secretary. There's a gentleman from New Jersey, a gentleman from Dallas, Texas, and then myself. And we spend the year campaigning and reaching out and going to events of the 120 voters for the national PGA election. So it's quite a process. And hopefully come November 3rd, I'm elected to serve as the next secretary, which is a guaranteed progression to vice president and then would also ultimately be the 45th president of the PGA of America. To be the president of the PGA of America is just an honor. I, I, it takes my breath away. Tell the folks a little bit about the process and how they can help or get involved. And even if it's just rooting you on from a distance like I am. Yeah, I think it's a combination of rooting me on or if I have a local and a national campaign team. And if you know anybody in section governance or national PGA governance, it always helps to put in a good word. There's basically three voting pots. There's the 41 sections across the country that each has two votes. The National Board of Directors has their own vote, individual vote. There's 22 members. And then all past presidents of the PGA, which there's 16, have a vote. So that's 120 votes and they vote until somebody gets the majority. What's really exciting is that as of today, day you know we just finished the the first half of the year you you go to events where you present and debate and you meet with all the voting delegates and we're finishing up that time where sections can provide early support if they know for sure who they're going to vote for and it's it's very exciting that as of today i have 16 letters of support so that's 16 sections that have already committed to supporting me and voting for me and to give you an idea the other two gentlemen have six and three so it's 16 wow. to six to three right now so it's off to a great start but there's also still a lot to do over the next five months leading up to the election uh november the third well you know nathan it's no surprise i mean you've done so much for the gateway section here you've done so much for the game as you said 19th year at wing haven the only Jack Nicholas design course in the area. And you're now, I think, for the last 10 of those years or 11 of those years, you've been the GM and director of golf. So you have worked your way up the system. You've started towards the bottom and gone all the way, now headed all the way up to the top. Just congratulations. Please keep us informed and let us know how we can help and get involved. Oh, I really appreciate it, too. And if you want to follow it, we do. We have a website going. It's pretty simple. It's NathanCarnesPGA.com. You can follow. You can see the team. You can see some important information. You can follow the support map. You can see all the letters of support. And hopefully we'll keep adding to it over the coming months. And again, November, hopefully, hopefully something that's never happened in the Gateway PGA will happen as of November 3rd of this year. That's Nathan Carnes. He is running for the Secretary of the PGA of America right here from our Gateway section, and he is our first Gateway Spotlight this year. Nate, thanks so much, buddy. Hey, thanks, Jay. Thank you. That was the Gateway PGA Spotlight on Golf with Jay Delsing. To find out more, visit PGA.com. I am proud to welcome the Gateway section of the PGA back to my show. Whether you're pulling into your favorite driving range, public golf course, or country club, there is an excellent chance that the staff there is part of the over 300 men and women PGA professionals at over 100 facilities that make up our Gateway section. I grew up watching so many of these fine men and women getting to the golf course at dawn, leaving at dusk, spending their entire day running events, giving lessons, and growing 
having this great game. PGA Reach, Drive, Chip, and Putt, PGA Hope, and the fantastic PGA Junior League are a few of the examples of the programs run by these same PGA professionals. Go to gatewaypga.org to learn more or to find your next PGA professional for your next lesson, go to pga.com. The Gateway PGA, growing the game we love. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. The Front Nine is presented by the Ascension Charity Classic, September 5th through the 11th at Norwood Hills Country Club. For tickets, ascensioncharityclassic.com. Hey, welcome back to the show. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay. I got Pearly with me, and we're headed to the Front Nine. That's brought to you by the Ascension Charity Classic. Folks, September 5th through 11th, Norwood Hills Country Club. You got to check it out. Best senior players in the world will be there. Pearly and I will be there in some capacity, hopefully playing. He'll be helping me find my ball somewhere in the woods. But anyway, also the Advocate PGA Tour event at Glen Echo, which is just fantastic as well. So, one of the cool announcements that we had on the show a couple of weeks ago is that the winner of that advocate event gets a sponsor exemption into the Mayacoma Worldwide Technologies Classic down in Mexico. And that is just a great, great little segue for them. And we're hoping that it's Christian Heavens, my buddy. He'll be playing there. So, John, the question you asked was about the memorial and the, yeah. and the, and the golf course itself. What did you think of the changes and how did you adjust to it or what did you and your peers think about Back in the day when you'd go to a course the next year and there's the dreaded par four that was 430, they changed it to 480, and well, a par five that was semi-reachable, they added either changed it to a par four or added 60 or 70 yards. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times it just depends on how much I like the course going in, you know, the old course, and, and how much success I had. I never I never loved the ideas of them changing it if I had a bunch of success in a and of course, you know, the scores we're getting and the players were, were kind of outgrowing Muirfield Village, uh, for lack of a better term, and they were uh, overpowering it. Huge characteristic of any Jack Nicholas golf course that you'll ever go to is really, really generous fairways. You don't see many super, super tight holes on Jack Nicholas golf courses one after another. They're usually pretty ample room to drive it in. And he still had quite a bit of room, but he made it extremely penal if you miss the fairway. And I think that's what he wanted to do. And I think it reflected in the scores. He was trying to hold the scores down to a reasonable number and not let this thing turn into that birdie fest like you see almost every week on the PGA Tour. Well, it's such a beautiful layout and, and everything's just so pristine. It's it's amazing. Uh, I was just wondering when they're, when they're changing that up because nowadays they're making a lot of those changes when they can because the game is is changing with it. What the guys, the quality that's coming to play at these events each week has certainly been changing. Absolutely. What did you think about uh, Jack and Barbara Nicholas play yellow and that whole thing? Wow. We talked about this on your show before. I mean, what he's done down in Florida in particular, and I'm sure around uh, Muirfield as well, uh, him and Barbara for, for the children's, for the hospitals. But now this is a worldwide effort. If you saw those yellow kind of pins that they put on the guys on their hats in particular, uh, on their caps when they're playing golf. That's what that's about. And they're just really encouraging people to take up different chapters throughout the country, throughout the world, and promote this. And, and all of this money uh, collectively is going to, uh, to different children's hospitals. It's uh, pretty worthy. And uh, Jack has obviously been a phenomenal player and ambassador to the game. But, man, the money these him and his wife and, and the rest of the people in this effort are raising is, is staggering. What's really interesting and what sticks out in my mind is you have a guy like Jack Nicholas that's able to not only do what he's doing in Columbus, Ohio, as you mentioned, where, the, where Muirfield Village is um, and, and down in Florida, but now he's got the entire world and joined. And I mean, only a, an ambassador like Jack Nicholas can, and Barbara Nicholas can pull something like that off. Their leverage to create such an impressive legacy, John, is really awesome. You can tell, you know, for these guys that they're at a different stage of life now and they probably see things just a little differently, and it's really fun to watch. Absolutely, and I think the, uh, the players really get into it. It's, uh, it kind of joins everybody uh, together in, in some common cause. It's, uh, it's, it's awesome. There's a lot of great causes out there, but when you've got the firepower of the Nicholases behind you, you can really make things happen. Yeah, so that was pretty neat. And um, Workday is a cool sponsor to have there. I, I really enjoyed the interview they had with their CEO on there that just talked about how Jack's always been kind of his boyhood idol. It's got to be a thrill for these these businessmen 
uh, regardless of how successful they've been, to be able to sit in the booth with Jack and strap their name of their company onto his tournament, that's a pretty cool deal. Absolutely. Well, hey, Jay, well, before we move on, I wanted to make see if you could talk a little bit about what you know about Billy Horschel as a player, as kind of how he operates. They're really talking about how meticulous and detailed he is and hardworking, because he was certainly out there when you were out there. What did you see in, in him? Uh, how, how did how did you see how he operated and, and how he was received by the other players? Right. I only got to play with him a couple of times, but he's he was definitely uh, he's a Florida Gator fan and an extremely hard worker, extremely physically fit, by the way. You could tell that as well. I think it, it all said uh, the way I would answer this question, Pearl, look back at how. He was talking to Amanda Renner when she said, you know, you've had leads before. You've won tournaments before. I think he's won six events, and but you've never had to sleep on a five-shot lead. You've never had to deal with that different type of pressure. What do you think? And he goes, you know what? If I can't win, I'm not doing my job. And he clearly looks and has broken this thing, the components of this stuff down into a job for himself. It works. It works for him. He's a fiery player, Pearl. When we were doing TV, we all we had to do is let him swing and kind of lay out because he would describe what the heck's going on, and sometimes it'd be pretty graphic and fun. Yeah, I like him. I, I, I like what he does for the community there in Jacksonville. He's one of these guys. You got to remember, here's a guy, Pearl, that's won the FedEx Cup. You know what I mean? We're not talking about this guy that just goes around and wins a small event and knocks one off here and there. When his game's on, I mean, he, he doesn't take a backseat to anyone. He sure doesn't, and it's kind of fun. It's always interesting to see at the end of the tournament who's going to kind of come running out of the crowd. This little boy and the two girls, I, I'll tell you, as cute as they were, I have to tell you, he, him and his wife, and his wife was cringing at the time, but Jack Nicholas was so gracious to obviously greet Billy when he get out, get, came off the golf course, but then his wife was there, and, and she said hi to uh, Mr. Nicholas, and then the, 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 the kids and the one little girl would not look at Jack Nicklaus. She's shaking his hand and she's just, I don't know if she's shy, intimidated, or just want to go chase her dad, but it was pretty funny. And obviously they don't really know who he is per se. And uh, it was, it was just interesting, but it, it was cute as could be. And it was just kind of fun to see a guy that uh, certainly has respect of being a hard worker out there and kind of, kind of walking the walk of a PGA tour player uh, do so well. Last thing, how, what'd you think of his putting routine? It looks so mechanical, but what I do like, and they talked about this on their telecast a little bit, is that there's a lot of motion. He's moving into this thing, so there's a real rhythm to the way he's putting. I think there's a lot to that. They were talking about Scott Scheffler several weeks ago, and I think your buddy Brad Faxon was just saying how, imp- how impressive it is that Scotty doesn't ever stop for any of his shots. There's always some motion, something going on. I don't think most of us in the golf world understand that. And that might be super subtle. Once upon a time, Jack Nicklaus, so it goes, never grounded his club. So even just the fact of never grounding your club, there's a level of, of motion going on there. But you know who else does a lot of that? And it's Patty Ice. Patrick Cantley keeps on kind of inching in and inching in. And at the last second, uh, he pulls that left foot back, which always seems so weird to me. And then two seconds later, he's pulling the trigger. So I guess it doesn't matter as long as you've got your routine, you've got a bit of a flow, and something's kind of indicating when you're going to start that 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 backswing in your putting stroke, and it certainly worked for him. And and Billy's been doing that for as long as I can remember watching him. Yeah, it, it, yeah. There might be some subtle changes, I'm sure there is, but relative to watching him on TV. He's had the same kind of creeping in there approach to his putting for a long time. All right, so John, let's head over to LIV. Greg Norman, Jeez. Dustin Johnson, and 125 million. He's the headliner, 13th ranked player in the world, allegedly receiving 125 million to play in these events. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what I think about it. I, you know, Kevin Na, that whole thing. Uh, I don't know, Jay, because uh, you know, you and I obviously, I think obviously, one of the elephants in the room, and maybe the elephant in the room. What leverage does the PGA Tour really have? So until we really know that, maybe we won't know that through until years of court cases. But until we really know that, I don't know what to think of any of this. I think you're not alone. I mean, I think that's the that's the. Biggest elephant in the room. I mean, Kevin Na clearly is resigning because he wants to avoid any sort of penalties, any sort of uh, fines, any sort of suspensions that the tour may 
may hand down. I don't know if that's even necessary. I mean, I, I would have not done that had I been Kevin Na. I certainly wouldn't have done it timing wise. Maybe that's the advice that he got, and maybe it's safe. You know, maybe he can resign this year and and check to see if he can uh, re up. I, I just don't know. I don't. I'm not familiar with anyone ever doing that. I don't know. I, I've never seen this in my career. I, I really don't know. You know, some of the questions were, so, the, so can he play in the U.S. Open? Can he play in the Masters? He could definitely play in the majors. They are not PGA Tour co-sponsored. They have, the PGA Tour has little to no affiliation with the majors. So it just remains to be seen an awful lot of this stuff. We are going to take a break and break on the front nine here, and we will pick this up on the back nine. Don't go anywhere. There's more golf with Jay Delson. Hey, St. Louis, the Ascension Charity Classic, presented by Emerson, is back this September. Don't miss the excitement when the PGA Tour Champions Best compete again, all for charity, September 9th through the 11th at Norwood Hills Country Club. Pro-Am spots, hospitality packages, VIP tickets, and more. Available now at ascensioncharityclassic.com. I want to tell you about a family-owned and operated golf business that's been right here in St. Louis for over 40 years. I'm talking about Pro-Am Golf Center. That's right, Pro-Am Golf Center. I know you know the name, but I'm not sure you know what they really have to offer. They have everything a seasoned golfer like myself could need, all the way down to what a beginner would want. Pro-Am Golf Center has the lowest price in the area for custom club fitting. I just went and visited CJ. He is terrific. If you call them now, mention my name, Jay Delson, you will receive a discount on that already low club fitting price. Their number is 314-647-8054. Ask for CJ. Or you can visit them at ProAmGolfUSA.com. That's ProAmGolfUSA.com. Powers Insurance is a family-owned agency right here in St. Louis that specializes in providing personalized coverage for the client who has a lot going on. At Powers, they understand that you and your life do not fit in a simple box. So guess what? Neither should your insurance coverage. Go to powersinsurance.com or call 314-725-1414 and ask for Tim Davis. That's powersinsurance.com. Shondalyn Hutchison was admitted to the emergency department at SSM Health St. Louis University Hospital for unusual swelling, cramping, and tremendous pain in her legs. Life-threatening blood clots were discovered. Immediately, Dr. Keith Piera, a vascular interventional radiologist specializing in minimally evasive procedures to treat blocked arteries was brought in to see Ms. Hutchison. He then discovered that Shondalyn suffered uterine fibroids as well, often so debilitating that it would keep her from working. Dr. Piera quickly treated Shondalyn in both areas. It was amazing and immediate recovery occurred. Shondalyn is now fully recovered and working and thriving. Thank you, Dr. Piera and SSM Health St. Louis University Hospital. SSM Health has been helping the greater St. Louis area for over 150 years. Please sign up to play in their SSM Health Foundation Open at Norwood Hills on June 13th. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. To learn more about the game of golf, latest equipment, and golfing tips, Log on to jdelsinggolf.com. The Back Nine is presented by Pro-Am Golf. Hey, welcome back. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. Pearlie and I are here, and we are headed to the Back Nine. And the Back Nine is brought to you by our friends at Pro-Am Golf. Guys, pick up the phone and call 314-647-8054. Talk to CJ and get fitted. Call them, 314-647-8054, and call, talk to CJ, and get fitted. That's what you got to do. It'll help your game so much. You can visit them at ProAmGolfUSA.com, but get yourself fitted. That is the message. Let's jump back into the LIV, the Greg Norman. The whole thing is a wash with confusion and chaos and everything. And then we have a guy like Kevin Na sending in his resignation for the PGA Tour. Well, first of all, what does that even mean? Who, who else has ever resigned from the PGA Tour? You are a tour member. I mean, I'm a member of, I'm still a member of the PGA Tour. I still pay PGA Tour dues. I mean, Pearl, he's giving up his right to vote on certain things. 
So I mean, what's what in general? Short of Kevin now, right now, and maybe some guy that didn't want to pay his dues. Does anybody ever resign from the PGA Tour? You, you're no. Killing yourself, you're killing yourself to get out there. Who's ever resigned before? I think that'd be a cool trivia question. I, I'm thinking maybe nobody. I don't know of anybody resigning. So here's what Kevin said. Here's the quote. I am, and, and you and I, he's a heck of a player, interesting guy. He matured a bunch on the tour, but he's definitely a different cat. He said, I am sad this year that I have chosen to resign from the PGA Tour. Then he goes on to say, this has not been an easy decision and not one I, ta- I take lightly. I hope the current policies change and I'll be able to play on the PGA Tour again. I'm just trying to take that from the standpoint of the commissioner. So if you are going to keep these guys off the coming back to the tour, if you're going to kick them off for a while or kick them off forever if they go play in this LIV. But then the one guy thinks that if he resigns, he can, has a better chance of coming back than the guys that don't resign, even though he's resigned for the same reason. The other guys haven't. I, 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 it's, 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 it's a, so look, so Kevin now was the number one amateur player in the world. He came out on the PGA Tour. I played golf with him several times. The guy's an unbelievable putter. And he's made a phenomenal amount of money and a, and a great career. But, man, he's grown up a lot. He was 19 years old playing on the PGA Tour, and he was a handful, just a handful. So, guys, here's the story. This is my, this is my first introduction to Kevin Na. He's wearing bright yellow hat with bright yellow pants and bright yellow shoes. And he had this clothing deal from this a South Korean company. I'm playing with he and Jose Maria Olathabel, who is swearing in Spanish all day long because all he can, he's got two shots. He's got a duck hook and a double duck hook and it's low and he's hooking this driver. And you know, I'm slicing my driver. So I shake hands with him on the first tee and I don't see him again until 18 because he's hitting the hooks and I'm hitting slices. And anyway, Kevin Knott comes up to me in, in just this arrogant way. And he said, is this your first year on the PGA tour? I said to him, how old are you, Kevin? And he said, I'm 19. And I said, were you born 19 years ago in the first two weeks of January? And he said, no, I wasn't. And I said, well, son, I play, I've been playing on the PGA Tour since your ass was born. And you know what he said back to me? You have a couple of daughters I could date. And I'll, I'll, how'd that go for you? Whew, that didn't <laughs> go well. You want to talk about pressing a button. He's challenging. He's just got a different perspective. He does this little walk with the putts. He does some stuff that irritates plenty of other pros. I can promise you that. (laughs) Now I think he feels like he's free to go play this event in London. At the end of the day, relative to spectator, and at some point spectators matter, right? Uh, Otherwise they can't get the ad revenue. They can't get the following. They can't get the money. I guess if the Saudis are just going to give money, then I guess maybe those rules are out the door as well. But eventually... Eventually, if they don't want to just continue to fund it out of their pocket, people are going to need to watch it. Do we really care? Who really cares if a guy is playing for a first prize of, of $1 million, $10 million, or $20 million? John, it's not relevant. It's not, there's no relevance in the world of golf. You're going to make these team events kind of an interesting concept, but there's no relevance. There's no records associated with right. it. John, there's no, there's no relevance other than they're paying these guys obscene amounts of money. I mean, Kevin now probably got somewhere between 40 and 50 million bucks to play these events. Wow. Wow. And I mean, look at the guys that are playing. You got Sergio, you got GMAC, you got um, Poulter, you got Westwood. These guys, they're past it, John. They're past it. These guys aren't playing on the Ryder Cups anymore. These guys aren't, maybe Sergio will, but I mean, they're past it. I'm not sure what the... Where's the draw? What makes this compelling? I don't see it. Well, that's that's my question. At the moment, I suppose it's compelling because of all the controversy. But I'm thinking two, three, four, five years down the line, who cares about some obscure event out in the middle of nowhere uh, that they're playing for a bunch of money for? I just don't care. I'm with you. I think it's more the build up to the Masters, the build up to the Open, the build up to the U.S. Open, those types of things, even the Australian Open, those those types of things. The buildup is a lot of fun. When it's just cash, you know, I always kind of contend that with any of the sports. Do I really care if a guy's making fifty million or four hundred million? What's the difference? I just want to see, you know, some some good, good traditional ball being played and that kind of thing. So I don't know. I, I, I only time will tell on this one because I think everybody's running around in circles trying to figure out how does this land. I just don't see it being relevant. The, this first 42-man uh, field is far from impressive. 
as far as I'm concerned. I just don't see a bunch of other players jumping ship to go do this. I mean, I just don't see it. I don't see yeah. Rory. I don't see JT. I, Tiger Woods, for certain, is never going to do something like that. First, get your PGA Tour card. You sign away your rights, your name, image, likeness, that sort of thing, to the PGA Tour. They now control those rights, very similarly to any other league, John. You know, the NBA has to own them. Mike Trout, MLB owns the ability to use their their images across the media to help promote the sport. But what we do have is the ability to make our own schedules. For the most part, we can get our own sponsors. There was a time where you could not have any sort of, um, you could have a beer sponsor, you couldn't have any liquor sponsors, you couldn't have gambling associated with you. That's all out the window now. That's all out the window. I can remember having an opportunity to wear uh, a Caesars logo. Do you remember Bob Holleran from, yep. from Bel Air in our UCLA days? And he was an executive there, and I did a few things for him. And he said, you know, we, we should put the, the, the Caesar, Caesars Palace on your, uh, on your sleeve, and we were not allowed to do it. It's interesting because you're talking about the, the likenesses, the image, that type of thing, and how they control it. But here we are what, having the NCAA go the opposite way where the kids are going to get paid for that stuff in college. So there's there's another twist and a turn right right within that. You're going to be having, to some level, you're going to have college golfers that have the ability to be paid for their likeness. Then they're going to come on the tour, get their card, and they're going to have to give that up. But they're also then going to have the, the ability to be a professional, so they're going to be able to play for prize money within the PGA Tour structure. Clearly understandable, you know, John, where this is going to go. Obviously, this is going to wind up in the courts, which I kind of hate, but I don't see any other way. I mean, especially with all this money that Norman has behind him. You know, Pearl, some disruptors are fantastic. They get to open your mind and and, and they get to you to see a different way. And there will be some, and there already have been some positive things that have spun out of this for the PGA Tour. Just better communication with the players. Just trying to understand some of the gripes that they have. I mean, the whole Charlie Phoenix Open this year, when Charlie didn't understand the rules and took a bad drop and all that, you know, jazz. It's just, just a weird look. Well, we'll see. We'll see. I'm sure we'll be talking about that more down the road. It's uh, it's it's going to be with us and dinking around with us for a long time. What's your take on this? Does this is this going to is this going to stay around? It's got a lot of money. Will it have staying power? What are you seeing? I think I'm in in your camp. I think it just kind of it's hot for a while and then I think it just kind of morphs. Didn't the last kind of Greg Norman challenge if you will to the tour and that to be that world tour. It did it did eventually end up in more worlds some world events, if you will, and to collect points for in the point system and, and all that kind of thing. So I, I'm guess, guessing this is too. I think the PGA survives this and the other one kind of goes away to some level, but as you said, uh, make, make some changes. And I'm with you on the disruptor. I, I just don't, I'm just not seeing a whole lot of the upside why we're disrupting here. Um, so many great things already happen within the tour and growth, quality of play, quality of golf courses, money. I'm not seeing the need, but I guess that's what it's all about. We'll have to see in two or three or four or five years. We're going to sign off on the back nine here. We'll come back for the um, 19th holes brought to you by the loading dock. I love these guys, but I, I got one more comment on that on the European tour when we come back. This is Golf with Jay Delsey. Folks, are you in the market for some additional protection for your ride? You need to call my friends at Vehicle Assurance. Their number is 866-341-9255. Sherry Fain is the owner and president, and she and her team are committed to helping you with your unexpected auto repair bills. They are committed to finding the right protection for you, your budget, and your family. They only work with the top vehicle service providers in the country. Get the protection and the peace of mind you deserve. That's Vehicle Assurance, 866-341-9255 for a free quote. 866-341-9255. Hey, St. Louis, the Ascension Charity Classic, presented by Emerson, is back this September. Don't miss the excitement. When the PGA Tour Champions Best compete again, all for charity, September 9th through the 11th at Norwood Hills Country Club, Pro-Am Spots, hospitality packages, VIP tickets, and more. Available now at ascensioncharityclassic.com. After my knee replacement, I was able to swing the golf club again without any pain. SSM Health Physical Therapy guided me through the rehab process, and when I was ready, 
one of their specially trained KVEST certified physical therapists put me on the 3D motion capture system. It was awesome. They evaluated my posture, alignment, and the efficiencies of my swing. They gave me golf specific exercises to help make my swing more efficient and repeatable. Call 800 518 1626. Tell them Jay sent you for special pricing. Your therapy, our passion. How would you like access to 90 holes of golf? Well, that's what happens when you join at Whitmore Country Club. You get access to the Missouri Bluffs, the Links of Dardeen, and the Golf Club of Wentzville. And guess what? No cart fees included in that deal. There's no food and beverage minimums. There's no assessments. They have a 24-hour fitness center, two large pool complexes, three tennis courts. Year-round social calendar includes holiday parties, picnics, date nights, live music. They even have a kids club for your children and much, much more. There's junior golf, junior tennis, and swim teams available. This is a family-friendly atmosphere, and they have a wonderful staff. If you get out there, you got to poke your head in the golf shop and say hello to my friend Bummer. He is a terrific guy, and he will help you with your game and show you around. And don't forget, there are golf leagues, skins games, members tournaments, and couples events available all year round. Visit WhitmoreGolf.com. That's WhitmoreGolf.com. Hey, do you like wine? Have you heard about the hottest new wine bar in St. Louis? It's called Wild Crush Wine Bar, and it's located in town and country on Clayton Road, just behind the Straubs. Have you ever experienced self-dispensing wine machines? Well, they are here. The only place in St. Louis and most of Missouri that you'll find them, and it's at Wild Crush. You can choose your size of pour, and Wild Crush will pour the freshest wine in the area for you. The organic argon gas system used at Wild Crush keeps this wine pristinely fresh for up to 60 days. So if you're tired of drinking wine that's been open for a few days, come into Wild Crush for the best and freshest wine selection in the area. Go to Wild Crush stl.com and come have one with us this has been golf with jay delsing to learn more about jay and the services he can provide any golfer visit jaydelsinggolf.com you'll see the latest in golf equipment Get tips from a PGA pro, and you'll learn more about the game of golf. That's jdelsinggolf.com. Hey, welcome back to the show. This is Golf with Jay Delsing. I'm your host, Jay. I got my caddy and buddy, John Perlis, with me, and we are headed to the 19th hole. And folks, we have got the loading dock as our official 19th hole of the Golf with Jay Delsing show. And I've been looking for a place, Pearl, for, oh my gosh, over three years. And these guys are so cool and so fun and beautiful Grafton, Illinois, right at the confluence of the Mississippi and the Illinois rivers. Pearl, do you know what the word uh, confluence means? Coming together. Check them out. Give them a call, 618-556-7951, or visit them on the web at graftonloadingdock.com. Peter Allen's a great guy over there. Peter, thanks for being on the show. All right, so, John, I've got a comment to make. I think that the European tour, as we know it, either in trouble or going to change dramatically. And what I'm thinking is going to happen is that the PGA Tour is going to cherry pick some of the better events and fill in our schedule on this wraparound portion where we head to California and uh, up and down. I think they go to Vegas and and some various spots. And I think they're going to fill those in eventually with European tour events, with the better European tour events. And those are going to be part of the PGA Tour. The DP World Tour, as it's called over there, is going to fold into the PGA Tour. That's what I think. Well, how would that affect everything else going on? Do you think that gives more strength then to the tour's effort in 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 this whole uh, live effort that Norman's got going? I don't know. I, I think it it may. The one thing that I just don't like about if that goes that way, John, is how many spots are going to be lost. You know, the one thing I, I just love the fact that. Hey, look, if, if you and I were graduating from college right now and I didn't get my card my first year, we could go play, try to go play in Europe. So maybe what happens is that the other events on the European tour get folded into the Corn Ferry. And this becomes a worldwide development tour as well. Well, it's interesting. You know, if you look at the ladies tour, like we were talking about earlier, there's a lot more world influence, uh, players from different nationalities. Certainly we have that on the tour, but it doesn't appear to me to be anywhere near as 
the versus ladies tour is. So maybe what you're saying, maybe that's what they're seeing. They're seeing a heck of an opportunity to kind of have the rest of the world pay more attention because the rest of the world is better represented out there. And, and the talent is out and about. When you look at it, I guess there's going to be more changes than, uh, than us old guys might want to think about. It's interesting, John. I don't know if that's true or not. So because one of the countries that is overly represented on the LPGA Tour is South Korea. I mean, there are just so many South Koreans that play. So you have... South Koreans are probably the number one country represented on the U.S. tour, followed by the Americans. You do have some Taiwanese golfers. You do have a couple of Chinese golfers. You do have some, uh, you've got a, Cana- a Canadian or two. You've got an English uh, Holly and a few others. But, you know, John, with the PGA Tour, the last, I mean, there's something like over 35 countries represented on the PGA Tour. So I guess I was looking again, like I said, I very easily could be wrong, but of the basic 125 guys on the tour, just wondering how many are not American versus of the ladies tour, how many are not Americans. That's the only way I was looking at it. So yeah. Maybe I, yeah. Maybe. I don't know. But, but, but to your point, but I mean, changed, both of them have changed a lot in the last 10 years. I just thought that ladies was further, further down that road might be wrong. What the LPGA has done, John, is they play all over the world. And one of the reasons up until now has been because a lot of the money that that tour was getting in was being driven from South Korea. They also play uh, the Evian in Paris. They also play an event in um, the Far East. And then quite a few, there's events in South Korea as well. They play all over the place. Well, to your point, if if the tour is liking what they're seeing with that, that makes a lot of sense then with what you're talking about is why they would try to do the same thing. In terms of diversity, inclusion, you know, all those hot button topics that we're talking about. I mean, I love the fact that some of these walls are coming down. Some of these doors are opening. So you're getting... You know, players, oh my gosh, uh, Sahith Thagala, stud from uh, Pepperdine. He's just a terrific player. And it's great to see another man of color out there cashing big checks, growing the game, and opening doors around his world that uh, may not have been open before. It's fun to watch him play, too, because he's got a bit of a backyard swing, just kind of gets up there and wails at it. Obviously, super talented, but a uh, bit homegrown, it, it appears to me. Uh, have you got any trivia for us this week? What... Uh, what sort oh of gosh. what sort of nuggets uh, do we have in the pearly bank over there? Well, we were going to talk a little bit about uh, playing under pressure. So, uh, with the nugget I can give you about playing under pressure is if you used to do it a lot and you were pretty good at it, and then you didn't do it for thirty years, it's really hard to do it again. I've just been playing in some a couple of little local things with friends, and oh my gosh, it doesn't take anything to just turn my, my golf world <laughs> upside down, and I'm hating. So maybe you could talk a little bit about now that we're getting our games going. Club championships are coming up. Member guests are coming up. What advice would you give to people, Jay, to kind of calm those nerves? Or you're out there playing with the boss man, the, the, the corporate outing. What do you do to calm nerves a little bit? You know what, Pearl? Let's start with talk a little bit about the things that you're dealing with from a physical standpoint and a mental standpoint. What is the biggest challenge for you uh, physically and mentally? My hands just absolutely twitch when I'm putting. Just absolutely. I get up over it. I'm starting to see my line. I've worked very, very hard to see my line. I have a good feel for it. I can even kind of feel it as I walk up. And then I, I take that backstroke and I'm somewhere about halfway through the backstroke and certainly halfway through the downstroke, my hands are just twitching all over the place. I'm like, well, how the heck am I going to make anything here? And so then you start questioning that because that's a feeling I don't have when I practice. So what the heck do I do with it? I remember when I played and I would get nervous. It was a different kind of nervous to kind of get through it. But now it's uh, it's overwhelming. And I'm guessing if I did it, if I played in 50 events like I used to, it would kind of go away. But I'm only going to play in two or three things a year max. So I don't know what to do about it. Have you tried putting with your eyes closed? When you first mentioned that to me once upon a time, I'm thinking, boy, that sounds very desperate. But what's so interesting, when your hands are twitching and then you close your eyes, my hands don't twitch, not even a little bit. Uh, and so that's really the answer for me. That's the only thing I've been able to go to. I know if I, I do have confidence that if I play more and I put myself under the gun more, it'll get better and better. I just don't know that I'm going to give it the time and those opportunities. So I, I do think that closing my eyes, I think ultimately that could kind of feed back and be better for my visualization of a shot anyway. Uh, but it's remarkable how eyes open, twitchy, eyes closed, one second later, no twitching. So, John, when you're out there playing and you start feeling this, are you struggling? Can you see your line? 
Oh, yeah. So you can see your line now, both good and bad. So you're you're able to sit on the putting green, and there's no twitching, and you're seeing your line because of the things we worked on, changing your perspective as you look down at the putt, and then you're able to hit it, and, and it rolls fine. Yep. Yep. I think you've got just a lot of residual that's hung in there from some old stuff. And obviously, as we get closer to the hole, we, we have a, a higher expectation of wanting to make, needing to make, let's close out this birdie or this par and, and take advantage of some of the good things we've done. And so there's some pressure associated with that. Are you able to get into enough of the shot and enough of the target and enough of your routine to let your hand shake and have the ball go in anyway? Oh, I, I can make an occasional putt when they're shaking, but it's just it's it's just super unnerving. And also, plenty of times it'll they'll they'll twitch enough to where a twenty footer isn't going to get within six seven feet of the hole. <laughs> and so now you got a six or seven footer, and you had a twenty footer that might be what you thought was semi makeable for birdie. Now you got a six or seven footer that's you know probably been blocked out to the side of the boat. Now this thing's breaking so. Yeah, it's uh, but that's where back to closing closing my, my eyes. I, but I've always I've always been challenged with with some of the pressure. I've heard you say, well, you know, my my hands are shaking, but I would make putts anyway. Yeah, mine's shaking. I don't. Yeah, well, so so the next thing I would do is for maybe try change your grip a little bit. Definitely change your grip pressure. I'm sure this is all right hand uh, with you. And my guess is it's your right hand, not your left. You know, you're yippy as you come down through the hit area. And I would talk, look at grip pressure. I would also think of maybe going left hand low or getting those hands closer together and really, really a light, as light grip as possible in your right uh, hand and fingers for sure. You know what happens when I start feeling those sensations that I don't feel when I'm practicing? All the flooding of, you know, it's like trying to explain to somebody how to throw a ball or catch a ball. How much do you open your fingers? How much do you bend your elbow? How much do you bend your wrist? When do you close your hand? And that's what happens because all of a sudden I get out there and there's just very different feelings. And so then all the things start creeping in my head. Well, if I'm going to do that or this this feeling, what do I need to do to compensate? Now that we're talking and I kind of reflect back, I can remember early on in college days how bad it would be, but I played enough events and just had enough experience. I got to the other place, Jane. I know you can re- relate to this. I got to the point where playing under competition was really the only time I could play with the dam. If there wasn't something to play hundred percent. Yep, hundred uh, percent. It wasn't terrible, but I, there was just no focus, and I and I couldn't play. So if there wasn't some money on the line or or competition on the line, I couldn't play. Now it's a little bit the opposite way. I go out there in the morning by myself, and I, I'm pretty damn impressive. But uh, I get there where I where I start caring, and it's uh, at this stage. So somehow I got to play in more events, I guess, if I want some of this to go away. But I'll try the other things that you're talking about. Yeah, sure. I can't wait to be together, Pearl. This is going to wrap up another show, but don't go anywhere. We're going to get we're going to examine you next time too this is fun (laughs) well thanks for being with me pearl and uh folks thanks for listening and we'll be back at you next week this is golf with jay delsing hit them straight st louis this has been golf with jay delsing to learn more about jay and the services he can provide any golfer visit jdelsinggolf.com you'll see the latest in golf equipment get tips from a pga pro and You'll learn more about the game of golf. That's jdelsinggolf.com. I've been looking for over three years for the perfect place to be the official 19th hole of the Golf with Jay Delsing show, and the search is over. Please welcome the loading dock to the show. What a great place it is. It is located at the confluence of the Mississippi and Illinois rivers in beautiful Grafton, Illinois. Their patio is killer with seating for over 800 and every weekend the loading dock has the area's best live music. There's no reservations required. They have overnight lodging available and they also have an ice skating rink in the winter months. And don't forget about the super cool Riverside Flea Market, which happens the fourth weekend of each month from April through October. If you're into antiques and collectibles, you got to check it out. The Grafton Ferry runs directly from St. Charles County to within steps of our parking lot. Go check out the loading dock and say hello to my buddy Peter Allen. He is a great guy, good golfer, and a lover of the game. Call 618-556-7951 or visit them on the web at graftonloadingdock.com for more information on their live music schedule, the Riverside Flea Market, and more. The Loading Dock, the new official 19th hole of the Golf with Jay Delsing show.
Hey, do you like wine? Have you heard about the hottest new wine bar in St. Louis? It's called Wild Crush Wine Bar, and it's located in town and country on Clayton Road, just behind the Straubs. Have you ever experienced self-dispensing wine machines? Well, they are here. The only place in St. Louis and most of Missouri that you'll find them, and it's at Wild Crush. You can choose your size of pour, and Wild Crush will pour the freshest wine in the area for you. The organic argon gas system used at Wild Crush keeps this wine pristinely fresh for up to 60 days. So if you're tired of drinking wine that's been open for a few days, come into Wild Crush for the best and freshest wine selection in the area. Go to wildcrushstl.com and come have one with us. Hi, this is Daniel LaRue from the Real GM Radio Podcast, and we are through four games of an incredibly fun, competitive NBA Finals, and the absolute star of Game 4 was Stephen Curry. Curry, probably the best Finals game of his illustrious career, 43 points on 14 of 26 from the field, including 7 of 14 on incredibly difficult threes, also had 10 rebounds, contributed defensively, and he was the Warriors' offense, particularly in the half court, and Bob Boston, phenomenal defensive team, working really hard, trying to stop what Curry did, and they just haven't been able to do it enough in the series. Curry, we're not all the way through, and it's only a 2-2 series, but 34 points a game on incredible efficiency, 49% on basically 13 three-point attempts per game. It has been a performance for the ages from a player who has given fans so many great moments over the years and probably will do it for years more. And now we have th- at least two, maybe three more games of the finals. Hi, this is Danny LaRue from the Real GM Radio Podcast. BetOnline.net is your number one source for all your betting needs and sports information, including the latest sports developments, league reviews, and news for this year's NBA and NHL playoffs, as well as Major League Baseball. BetOnline is also your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores, podcasts, news, and the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action at BetOnline, where the game starts.